big fish have always held a big spot in our hearts. So it's not surprising that when a big fish shows up, it's big news. March 2022. This 10-foot sturgeon was pulled out of the Fraser River in British Columbia. Best estimates have it at around 600 pounds. August 2021. For the first time in living memory, 600-pound bluefin tuna show up less than a mile off of shore of New York City, 100 miles away from the deeper waters these giants usually prefer. In July 2021, North Oregon coast, an 100-pound opa fish washes up in pristine condition, uncommon for that shallow depth and latitude. The list of headlines goes on and on and on. And millions of social media posts with millions of views all confirm big fish are having a big moment. Yeah, you let them know. Yeah, you let them know. You let them know. And in a world plagued by toxic pollutants, ecosystem shakeup, and massive ecological disasters, are fish responding? Are fish getting bigger? Let's take a closer look at that opa fish. Typically located in tropical waters, this fish made headlines across the U.S. after washing up on the North Oregon coast. Tiffany Booth of the Seaside Aquarium in Seaside, Oregon, was there the day the fish washed up on shore. Automatically, I was like, oh my gosh, that is an opa. And so the photo actually made it seem quite small. We thought I was going to come across this little tiny fish. And so we drove up and it's like this three and a half foot, 100 pound fish. We were both just in awe. This was the first time Tiffany had seen an opa in the wild. They're uncommon in Oregon waters. What was really rare about this fish was that he was so close to shore. Um, so that when it, it did die, and we don't know why it died, it could have been old age, it was a full grown fish, it washed up in pristine condition. And this wasn't the first time that southern warm water fish have shown up in Oregon. A couple years ago, we found a trigger fish on the beach, which is um, a tropical fish that you'll usually find down in Mexico and Hawaii. Um, we found a couple live Pacific um, snake eels, which same thing, they're, they're a type of fish that's usually found um, way further south. The case of the opa suggests that maybe fish aren't getting bigger, that maybe larger species are showing up in unexpected places. And it's possible that water temperature is playing a role here. Dr. Cisco Werner of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association studies just this, the impact of changing ecosystems on fish populations. As greenhouse gases trap energy from the sun, all components of the Earth system are warming. The oceans in particular have absorbed over 90% of the excess heat resulting from, from global warming. As temperatures change, as the oceans warm, uh, fish will shift their locations, generally poleward, so in our case, uh, northward, um, or they can also expand their ranges you know, to take advantage of perhaps other parts of the ocean that now become available to them with the changes in temperature. Along the East Coast, we have seen shifts in, in cod populations, uh, again, northward shifts. We've seen shifts in the migration of bluefin tuna, which used to perhaps reach the U.S.-Mexico border. Now they're central California and northward. In, in Alaska, we're seeing shifts of uh, Pacific cod shifting really rapidly. And by that, I mean in just a matter of four or five years, several hundreds of kilometers. Marine research scientist Kathy Mills studies the Maine coast one of the regions that has seen some of the most drastic temperature shifts in the world. So the Gulf of Maine is warming about three times faster than the global oceans. And over the past 15 years, we've actually been warming about five times faster than oceans around the world. These conditions turn Maine into a look into the future for other parts of the world if ocean temperatures don't stabilize. And we are also seeing changes in seasonality associated with that. So not only are fish being found in different places, but they're being found at different times. This has a huge impact on the local economy, where fisheries bring in millions of dollars and produce thousands of jobs each year. Maine cod, once a favorite of Maine fishers, has been hit particularly hard. The cod fishery really supported the first fisheries in the country, and we have seen these populations decline as waters warm. 
So they just aren't able to be as productive and continue producing as many young and have those be as viable and survive to adulthood as they could under cooler temperature conditions. In contrast though, uh, an important fishery in the region now, and in fact, the highest value single species fishery in the country is American lobster. Its population growth has really been favored by the warmer temperatures that we've experienced in the past couple of decades. So as waters warm, they moved into a really sweet spot where lobsters were incredibly productive. As a result, lobstering in Maine has exploded, further boosting the state's mm -hmm. economy. But what happens as water temperatures continue to rise and move beyond thresholds conducive of a healthy lobster population? It is really critically important that we not only focus on adaptation, but think about mitigating the long-term trajectory of climate change. There are limits to adaptation. There's only so much that we can do to absorb and adjust to the changes that are occurring. We know we are going to have continued ocean warming that will play out over the next couple decades. And experts agree we do have a choice to slow or even turn around these trends by implementing measures to curtail our carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions. Doing so is critical for the long-term trajectory of marine ecosystems and the people that rely on them.